Greetings, everyone. Good to see you once again for this Monday mindfulness meditation. <clears throat> I hope you're staying warm if you're in a cold place and keeping cool if you're in a warm place and practicing in between times that we see each other. <laughs> Finding your comfortable position, turning off ringers, which is what we just had to do here. Settling into this precious time that we have to be together to cultivate our practice of awakening. The um, most wonderful activity <laughs> that we can do in this life. I really love to imagine as we have been the last weeks, I don't know when this exactly started, the idea that we're actually in a temple together in person and that we're in each other's physical presence, in the presence of the beautiful sources of refuge and inspiration that we can conjure. <laughs> and in imagining that we're in this temple, that we're even more fully present than we would be just sitting here on Zoom, <laughs> where we know we can turn off our video and pick our nose or, you know, get up and go to the bathroom whenever we feel like it. If we're in a temple and we've come for this time, this precious time to practice together, we take our seat with great mindfulness and attention and we take in each other's presence around us and notice how beautifully each other is sitting and walking. And we give ourselves over to um, practicing as if our lives depended on it. Because they do. <laughs> Not to be heavy, but just to be honest. So today, um, I wanted to talk about what we call the six paramitas, the six perfections. These are this is a sort of a um, basic classic teaching from the Buddha. And when we practice slowing down, which is what this, this mindfulness practice teaches us to, you know, it's like Thich Nhat Hanh would say, this is a radical act of stopping. <laughs> when he said that, I always laughed and because it is so true. It's really radical. <clears throat> he would walk to a flight in the airport as if he were a snail moving the way we do our walking meditation, slowly, mindfully in the airport with all these people rushing by. And he would be like this, applying his practice in every situation. So this practice of stopping and slowing down um, is greatly enhanced by a few other things. And um, it's hard to slow down and stop, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> Luckily, we have a pandemic to <laughs> stop us in our tracks. <laughs> I'm getting carried away. 
All right, so paramita means perfection or perfect realization. In Chinese, the character for perfection or paramita uh, it means crossing to the other shore. So we talk about these six perfections as the qualities that help us to cross to the other shore. And we realize that we are on the shore of suffering, on the shore of anger and depression. We're stuck on this shore. It's what brings us to the practice when we realize that we don't know what to do. And we want to cross over to the shore of well being, the shore of happiness, the shore of um, freedom and liberation. But in order to cross over, <clears throat> we have to do something. <laughs> we, we, we need to get there. So how do we get there? These are the six paramitas. The more we can develop our capacity to be in the present moment and not caught up in all the thoughts and feelings of the past or the future, to calm our body, speech, and mind, to take our seat in the temple and take refuge in something larger than ourselves as we discussed last time. We learn in doing those things, we learn to look deeply, just resting awareness on the breath, that deep looking uh, begins to take root and we see things more clearly. And then every single time we take a step with awareness, with mindfulness or another breath, we have right then and there the chance to move from sorrow to joy, from anger to understanding, to from, from suffering to liberation. So we, this is kind of the ground that we're, we're on. We don't hope for the other shore to come to us. We have to make an effort. We have to learn to swim. We have to row our boat. We have to get on that raft and, you know, <laughs> get with it. And we have to be willing to get wet because we will make mistakes. We will fall in. But we're still focused on getting to the other shore. And that effort uh, is a beautiful thing. So these six perfections are part of that effort. They're, part, they're like tools that we practice to help us get to the other shore. the shore of non-fear. There's so much fear in the world these days. It's very easy to get caught in that collective fear. So we aim our compass and jump in and we get wet and we, we become what is called in Buddhism a stream enterer. Always like that term a lot. This, um, this process, this, this process of becoming a stream enterer. When we really take up the practice and we put it into our, we bring it into our lives and embody it, not just up here, but really um, putting it into practice. So the first of the six paramitas is called um, in uh, Pali, Pali language, the original language of the Buddha, dana. It means generosity. 
So we start this process by thinking of others, by putting what we're doing into a larger context, the context of caring about others and not just about ourselves. We catch ourselves every time we orient towards our own self-interest. Not that there's really anything wrong with taking care of ourselves, but we train ourselves to consider others' needs. Give in generously our time, our energy, our resources, whatever is needed. In order to, to be a bodhisattva and fulfill our vow of being of benefit to all beings, we have to give of ourselves. And this generosity in doing so is the seed of overcoming our attachment to a sense of self, which is really our greatest downfall. So trusting in something so much larger than ourselves that we are a part of, I like to think of that as Gaia, you know, the web of life. We're part of something. It's not just all about me, 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 me all the time. So this creates the conditions. This generosity, this giving, creates the conditions for perfection to enter our lives and for a new way of operating. The second um, crossing over <laughs> paramita is uh, shila, or discipline. So we, we need to stay focused. We need to exert some discipline in order to get anywhere, to learn anything. We have to study. We have to practice. We, we can't just, you know, expect it to all happen instantly. We need to practice and study and practice and study and practice and study, even when we don't feel like it. That's another little self-clinging when it's like, oh, well, I, I don't feel like it right now. Well, excuse me, but um, we don't always get to satisfy our little petty needs <laughs> because there's something larger that's so much more fulfilling. And when we cut through that attachment and exert a little discipline to something else, we um, grow, we learn and we grow. And making an effort Exerting that discipline has so many rewards, right? Yeah. Sometimes this paramita is translated as precepts um, because the precepts, or as Thich Nhat Hanh calls them, the mindfulness trainings, uh, they help us to stay focused on the path when we could easily go astray. So <coughs> um, maybe another time we, we can talk more about precepts. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the third paramita is kashanti. It's called patience. Biggie. <laughs> How many of us are impatient for things to be a certain way or go a certain way or happen in a certain amount of time? Um, we have to remember that it takes as long as it takes. We make things much more difficult when we get impatient, try to force it, get angry, 
go away, shut down, you know, ugh, it's not the way I want it to be. Or we have that tendency to get ahead of ourselves, to, to go, you know, so quickly that we're actually not present because we're way ahead, whether it's with our own self, with the world around us or with each other in relationship, anticipating things. And some of us are really smart and we know how to get things done and we want to see it done in a certain way. And so the practice of intentionally slowing down as we do uh, together is um, really helpful to train in being with whatever is arising with an open heart, with an open mind. With patience, something new can happen that we never even thought of. Or we give the other person a chance to come to their own truth at their own time. You know, instead of trying to push them. So there's much there. Thich Nhat Hanh translates this paramita as inclusivity, which is really an interesting take on patience. He counsels us to embrace all sides so as not to get caught based on the limitations of our cl <coughs> closed mindedness. So the fourth paramita is called virya. It means enthusiasm. So we connect through, through the Dharma, through the practice. We connect with our purpose. We connect with our vision. We um, connect with a, a reason for being, you know, that is, as I say, larger than ourselves caring for others, um, whatever it may be, entering the practice, just simply sitting down to meditate. You know, we, um, we have that energy and that enthusiasm, which is kind of this original positive energy that we come into. And it's like, oh yeah, let's do that. I, I really want to do that. And sustaining that enthusiasm in all the ups and downs is a, vi a big key in crossing to the other shore. And sustaining that positive energy when the world around us wants to pull us down. Um, not as a escape or a way of bypassing things, but as a truth, as a real source of energy. To, to make it where we want to go. We need to nurture this energy, and that energy grows when we do. That positive energy can take us anywhere. It's our inspiration. And it, it's a fuel, a kind of fuel Sometimes this one is translated as perseverance, but that feels a little heavy to me. It feels a little like slogging through the mud, which I suppose sometimes is that's what we we're actually doing. But if we have that enthusiasm um, and we see the bigger picture and we have energy, uh, we can do anything. The fifth paramita for crossing over is called dhyana and it means the perfection of meditation to concentrate fully 
in order to touch the deepest levels of our being. We practice stopping. We practice stopping to enter the present moment. Stop chasing after whatever it is that's going to make us happy, that we think is going to fulfill us. And we come back to our true self. Back into a place of meditation, a place of concentration, where we are capable of looking deeply, of seeing clearly, and to focus single-pointedly to perceive what is. Meditation is not about kind of like spacing out. It's really, there is some effort involved, some discipline and some effort involved in bringing ourselves to be fully present, to concentrate our mind and train our minds to be here, not there or there or there or there or there or there or there. But right here. So then that brings us to the sixth paramita, which is prajna or wisdom. And this is the perfection of understanding. When we arrive at direct understanding or insight, that when we know something unshakably, it's like, ah, oh, I get it. I see, I understand. It's not just an idea, but we feel it in our bones. We know, we know something. Truth, that truth that we, we know, we come to. Prajna is um, freedom from concepts, from ideas, from views. It's, they say that it is the substance of Buddhahood. And it's often referred to, Prajnaparamita is referred to as the mother of Buddhas. Because this is our innate nature and gives birth to or gives rise to all of the enlightened qualities. This prajna is the ground, the, the true source, or even you could say the container or the vessel of the state of awareness itself. That's qu that quality of real wisdom. real understanding. So per perfect understanding is present in all of the other perfections. And each of the per paramitas or the per perfections contain all of the others. So they're, you know, if you practice one, you practice them all in a sense you know, giving, giving deeply, you are also practicing great understanding. And if you look deeply at each of them, you will see how they are supporting each other. So we have these as resources within us. They're right here, right now. You know, w w without hoping or waiting, <laughs> for something to come along that's going to do it for us, these qualities are right here. We can call on them within ourselves and immediately begin to practice. And when we do, our lives begin to transform right away. We can move from anxiety and sorrow um, 
fear and anger to freedom and happiness, actually. And really and truly, I think one of the biggest keys is putting our attention on others instead of ourselves. Not sacrificing ourselves, but with that caring, that heart of understanding and caring. Bring such joy. We get so wound up in our own little stories. So we take a mindful breath. We sit up with concentration. We walk with patience through our lives. <laughs> we look deeply, generously. And wisdom is there. Understanding is there. These six perfections can truly carry us over the raging river to the shore of, of peace and understanding. And we need that today. Okay. So that's what I wanted to say. <laughs>